All right, so here we have a solid metal drum. This is a 55 gallon drum that is solid on the top and bottom. And when I mean that, I mean by it does not have a lid or anything holding a lid on. It is just one complete solid piece. The only thing it has for openings is this two inch bung hole and this one inch cap here. Those we're going to just leave on because we want to use the lid to be able to suffocate the fire and also make sure no water gets in the drum. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here and I'm going to make a line going all the way around this thing about two inches down so I have enough lip here to make a real lid. So to make this line I laid the barrel on its side. Make sure you're cutting the top off not the bottom. Again the top is where the bung holes or the caps are. To make that line all I did was lay it on its side and get something that's a couple inches thick which I used this uh, paint stir and as a marker I used what the earth has given me which is a rock. And I went around this, uh, rolled it as I was marking it, and as you can see, there's just a, a rough marking line. That doesn't have to be perfect. The only reason I make this even line is because when I put the lid on it, I want the lid to actually be pretty level and, and lay on there properly instead of being all crooked and everything. So now I'm gonna get a sawzall or reciprocating saw, and I'm gonna cut this. So I am going to use this, uh, this torch I have here. Uh, I'll put a link to some of these metal cutting, but just make sure it's a it's a basic metal blade. So that way, uh, you know, your wood blade or something like that's not going to work. Make sure it's at least a, a decent thin metal blade. This one's going to work well. And a long blade works well too, because when we first start to cut, we're going to be going, you know, on the side of the barrel. It's going to try to make a, a cut in it. The longer the actual blade, the easier it is to get that cut started so we can get in there. Again, I'm just going to use my rigid reciprocating saw. But if you have a a angle grinder like this with a cutoff wheel you could use it I don't use these much unless I'm welding or something because they get a little messy and you end up getting all that all over you so this is gonna be a little cleaner for me and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this now before you start cutting into these barrels and making sparks and so forth you need to know what was in that barrel luckily I know exactly what was in these barrels but if you're cutting into a fuel barrel or something like that you need to wash it out fill it with water do something to uh, neutralize anything that could be explosive or flammable inside of it. All right, just so you didn't have to hear all that on the video, I'm gonna show you what I got here. I've got a, a long cut that I made from that long blade. It's not very thick. These are pretty thin metal barrels, but this, since I do have a long blade, it cut this slice into the side of the barrel very easy. And I'm going to stick this blade inside of this slice and I'm gonna walk around this thing on the ground and cut this nice and smooth. All right, and there it is. Uh, ear protection may be something you want to think about too. That was actually pretty loud cutting that metal barrel. But I cut the lid off. It's not perfect, but it's close enough to the line. And see how there's an edge left on the lid? That is what I'm going to cut and bevel out so that way it will fit on top of this uh, barrel. Now, you can get fancy. You can smooth out the cut, make sure there's no burrs. You know, you don't want to get cut when you're doing this, especially if you have kids around. I don't really do any of that. I don't need it fancy. All right, so let's talk about the bottom here. So typically the bottom is, you know, concave on the bottom. And when you put a load inside this barrel, typically the middle is going to be the, the lowest point. So I usually always cut a hole right smack in the middle of the lowest point. Now this is a three quarter inch drill bit I put here. So I cut a three quarter inch hole. That's probably all I'm going to put in the bottom. You don't really need holes in the bottom because you're not going to get much airflow from the bottom of the barrel. This is specifically to let any moisture that gets inside of this barrel drain out. If you don't dump your barrel, which I usually don't, it's going to start building up with ash in the bottom. Well, over time when you're burning, there's not going to be enough heat always burning in there to get rid of any moisture that has has collected in that ash. So this is just to help the moisture slowly seep out the barrel and keep from rusting the whole bottom of your barrel out. Now I'm going to go up and down the side of this barrel and probably put, I don't know, 20 holes all the way around this barrel. You can do it as neat and pretty as you want, but I'm just going to go around and spread them out evenly. And that should be enough for good airflow in the side of the barrel if you want that nice hot fire to burn things faster. Now this is optional. You do not have to drill holes in the side. I would say it's pretty much mandatory to drill a hole in the bottom because you don't want the bottom of your barrel rusting out prematurely, but the holes in the side, totally optional. I don't even do it on most of my barrels now because I find that it just burns it good enough 
and I don't have an issue. So you can put them on the side. It does make it hotter. It does let more air get in the barrel, but it's not necessary. All right, now, so with that same drill and that same bit, I went around this barrel and cut three quarter inch holes. As you can see better through the inside of the barrel, there's some holes, there's some holes, uh, there's some more over here and over here. So I put eight holes in it and I put them right below the um, bends in the barrel, the rings in the barrel to try to make sure it doesn't, you know, decrease any of the stability of the barrel. But these barrels are pretty strong. They, they hold up fine. And that's it for cutting those. Now it's just fitting the lid. All right. So I set this lid back on top to, to explain this one. So this barrel, of course, is the same diameter, right? So there's no lip. There's no overhang that it's going to do because it's the same diameter top and bottom the circumference is the same so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put some cuts in the lid using the sawzall and i'm going to slightly tap out the top of these you know bend them out a little bit so that way they're beveled just enough to sit right on top of this cut so let me start cutting that so you'll know what i mean all right so sawzall made very quick work of cutting little notches in this lip all the way around the barrel lid. So the lid that I cut off, as you can see from the shadow, all of those little slices. Now I'm just going to get this hammer and I'm going to tap those things out just a little, just enough to where they'll sit nicely on the outside of that uh, barrel cut and make a great lid. So basically you're just going to come over here and tap these out. So you can see I made all these slices here and bent this out. They're bent out a little bit. All the way around. They're just there to hold the lid on. After you've cut this lid, you're gonna wanna hit them pretty good. I mean, they bend out pretty easy, but don't be afraid to bend them out too far because if they bend out more than you want when you put the lid on top of the barrel well, you can just get a hammer and tap them back on you want them bent out enough though to where the lid sits on real easy and comes off real easy it's going to do it right here so that's it now there's going to be a lot of sharp edges i'm usually always wearing gloves when i'm burning with the burning barrels and so forth because i know about the sharp edges and of course everything else that i'm throwing in the barrel but if you want it beautiful and you want it nice and smooth hit it with a grinder Grind it up, make it pretty, make it smooth so you don't get all cut up. I don't paint them. I don't do any of that because as soon as you throw that fire in there, even this enameled paint that's on here right now, it, it's going to be gone in like five minutes. So I don't paint them. I just go get another one if I need to. That's it. Hope that was helpful. If uh, you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other people find the video. And if you would also consider subscribing to the channel. It's that red button right below the video that says subscribe. It's absolutely free. Y'all take care. See you soon.